Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Now, if you are considering making Navarre, Florida your next home, then you've come to the right place because today I'm going to share with you seven things that you must know before moving to this beautiful coastal community. So let's dive right in. So I've moved to the area back in 1994. Uh, I don't really remember a whole lot about Navarre back then. I mean, I was a kid, but I just remember seeing new homes being built. Um, there were a lot of older homes too. Um, not uh, so many places as far as restaurants and places to shop uh, that I recall, but over the years almost 30 years uh, it was great to be able to see the development in navarre um, there's more homes being built there's a lot of areas that are being cleaned up more stores being um, being placed and opening up there's uh, restaurants coffee shops being opened in the area of course a lot of people love their coffee <laughs> so just again the development over the years has been amazing um, and especially navarre beach as well it's known as florida's most relaxing beach so that's an added bonus to living in the navarre area um, so you still have amazing access to get to the beach and relax. So if you are interested in living in a town that is established but still growing, then Navarre is definitely a perfect little spot for you. So first and foremost, let's talk about the housing options. Now this little charming town offers a variety of homes that suit different preferences and budgets. From beachfront condos to townhomes to single family homes, Navarre pretty much has it all. So whether you're looking to buy or even rent for now, you definitely would have plenty of options to choose from. Now, I did mention there are a lot of older homes um, in Navarre. You'll still see um, a lot of homes that were built maybe in the 70s or 80s, and there are a lot of mobile homes there too. Um, there's a lot of people that don't prefer to live on a street that's still somewhat being developed. You know, there's um, new construction homes on one side of the street and possibly still mobile homes on the other side. Um, so you'll see a lot of that as well, but that's really just a matter of preference. Um, people are worried about the value of the home. Um, maybe the area isn't as appealing to them because there are still those old mobile homes in place. And, you know, they're very excited about having a new construction home. They want to have that new community feel. Um, so as far as housing options go, make sure you do your research and see where these properties are located and check out the surroundings, maybe connect with a realtor, uh, such as our team, and uh, really find out how that area is developing or where they're at as far as its growth. Um, because Google Maps isn't always updated and street views. So um, just to get a better idea of what the neighborhood or the streets really look like, just connect with us and we'll definitely be able to tell you uh, the status of the actual conditions of the streets, the, the um, construction status, and if there are older homes that might not be appealing to you we'll definitely give you all that information there's also a lot of townhomes that are being built as well so if that's more so what you're looking for a little bit you know less maintenance on the outside uh, that we would definitely have some options there there are some apartments available as well now if you want a condo uh, there's plenty of options out there on the beach there's townhomes and single-family homes too but again that depends on your budget uh, you'll just have to take in consideration uh, the tourists if you do want to live in a bar beach that you will be sharing space uh, with those people that are wanting to enjoy the beautiful uh, waterfront views and the, the white sands and the beautiful emerald green waters. You really can't blame them, can't be mad at them, uh, but just keep in mind during peak season that that area will be a little more congested. Uh, but if you don't mind sharing the community with guests, then by all means, you'll definitely enjoy that area. Now, if you're looking for a community that has amenities that come along with it, then Holly by the Sea would definitely be a great option. Living in that area, you have access to the Holly by the Sea Rec Center. So that is uh, unfortunately on the south end of the road. So it's not easily walkable from the Holly by the Sea neighborhoods. So you would have to cross Highway 98 to get there, um, but it's still, it's still worth it with everything that you have access to. Um, there's family pools, there's kiddie pools, lap pools, basketball courts, um, campgrounds, there's a little beach house that you can uh, use for events such as birthday parties or maybe um, baby showers and uh, it's right there on the water too so it's beautiful views from that little beach house um, and it's just a small HOA fee per year I can't remember what it is at this point but it is under $600 per year uh, for the HOA fee in the Holly by the Sea area um, and what I like about Holly by the Sea as well you do have bigger lots out there average maybe around half an acre so for those of you that do want a bigger lot Holly by the Sea is a good spot to look at there are are some vacant lots available too if you want to start from scratch or you can check out one of the model homes um, you can connect with us and uh, we can connect you with someone that can help you uh, go through the process of building a home from start to finish I know that can be a lot to deal with so if you need assistance with that we can definitely help you along the way 
Now let's talk about things to do in Navarre. It's not just about laying out on the beautiful beach and soaking up the sun. There are other activities that you can enjoy as well to keep you entertained. Um, you can go paddle boarding, kayaking. Um, there's a, a splash pad water park for the kids. There's a little playground at the Navarre Park um, before you actually get to Navarre Beach. There's the Navarre Beach Marine Park where you can hike, bike, and enjoy picnics with a stunning beach view. And you also don't want to miss out on the Navarre Beach Sea Turtle Conservation that's nearby the Gulf Breeze Zoo. Now let's talk about dining and shopping options, which is one of my most favorite things to talk about. <laughs> when it comes to dining, Navarre has a wide range of restaurants and eateries offering delicious seafood and diverse cuisines. Uh, from beachfront cafes to upscale dining establishments, you'll never run out of food options here in the area. Um, just to kind of slip in my favorite areas to go to when I'm in Navarre, um, I do love some sushi. So one of my favorite sushi spots in Navarre is the Slippery Mermaid. It's like a little small, cute little building out there, but they offer great options when it comes to seafood. Um, now, when I am craving Italian, I like to go to a place called Bella Luna. Um, they had uh, some stuffed raviolis uh, that I absolutely enjoyed and my husband enjoyed the lasagna that they had there. Uh, so you can't beat that. Um, and another place that I like to go to, because I'm a huge pizza lover, is the New York Pizza District. It's located in Harvest Village. Uh, so if you do make it to the Navarre area, make sure you check out those places if you love sushi, Italian food, and uh, pizza. Everybody loves pizza. And for shopping, Navarre offers a lot of little local spots. Um, there's local boutiques, gift shops, little uh, coffee shops. Uh, there is a new Starbucks that is just uh, added. I'm not sure if it's open yet because brand spanking new. And for shopping, Navarre has a lot of local boutiques and gift shops and larger retail centers, uh, making it convenient to find everything that you need that's close to home. Navarre isn't exactly a big shopping area, but you do have your local Walmart. There's Publix, Winn-Dixie. Um, again, there's a couple of the little plazas that are being built that have other little shops in there that make it convenient for you to, to find what you need. Um, as far as uh, drugstores, there's CVS and there's Walgreens as well. But if you are an extremely heavy shopper and you like to shop till you drop, you might need to head on out of Navarre, but not too far out. Uh, you can go into Pensacola or head the opposite direction and check out the uh, Dustin Commons out in Dustin. Or if you want to go even further and do some heavier shopping, you can go to Silver Sands Outlet out there past Dustin in the, the Miramar Beach, San Dustin area. Now you also want to know about the traffic if you're going to be living in Navarre. Um, Highway 98 is the main road that goes through Navarre. Uh, so that's the road that can be very congested during certain times of the day and definitely certain times of the year because a lot of people are getting on that road to get access to Navarre Beach. Um, so if you are military especially, you'll need to know that um, if you do have those typical maybe 7 to 4 p.m. hours, um, there's a lot of heavy traffic that is heading east to get to Herbert Field. Um, and of course, after 3, 4 o'clock in the evening, uh, if you're heading west back towards Navarre Gulf Breeze, then that traffic can get a little congested during that time as well. Um, especially during school time, maybe after 2, 3 o'clock when schools are letting out, so that's when traffic tends to pick up there too. And peak season, when there are a lot of tourists in the area, um, trying to get to the beach, uh, the central part of Navarre, uh, close to um, Highway 87, uh, getting close to Navarre Beach, that little general area can be a little crowded um, with people trying to either get through or trying to get to Highway 87 or trying to get to Gulf Breeze, trying to get to the beach. Again, it's just that one main road that you need to access to be able to uh, get to where you need to go. Um, so peak season is usually around spring break, maybe end of March or early April through uh, Labor Day. So maybe the first week of September and it dies down a little after that. Um, but if you are um, working full time, you have those daytime hours, like so many people do, uh, you will have that morning traffic and typical evening traffic. Uh, some people ask, well, really, when you say how bad is the, tra you know, is the traffic really that bad? Uh, because they might be coming from New York or at the DC area or Seattle or LA or somewhere out there on the West Coast uh, to where the traffic here is nothing. I mean, it's just like little baby traffic compared to where they come from. So uh, when we say traffic is horrible, it means that um, we have to add on maybe 10 to 20 minutes to our average commute time when uh, there's not traffic hour or uh, 
peak season where there's a lot of tourists in the area. So consider us complainers. It is what it is. Uh, but if you are from one of those bigger cities where uh, traffic is horrible, especially Atlanta, I know that's a very bad area as far as traffic. No, traffic is not like those areas here in the Navarre area. Uh, it's a little more tame than that. Again, we just like to complain a lot of locals like to complain a lot about the traffic. Um, but you uh, definitely won't have a problem if you're used to it or if you don't mind it, you have the patience for it and you like to you know, have a little carpool, uh, carpool karaoke, then you'll have a blast sitting there in the traffic. Now, the fifth thing I'd love to let you know about is the beach access. I know I mentioned Navarre Beach earlier, but living in Navarre means that you do have that quick and easy access to get to the beautiful beach out here on the Emerald Coast. I mean, there's just a beautiful stretch of white sand and turquoise water. I know you're used, probably used to hearing emerald green water, but turquoise or just bright blue, whatever you wanna call it, it's beautiful regardless of the color. So both residents and tourists love to enjoy those walks on the beach to enjoy the beautiful sunset or if you're an early riser you'll enjoy those beautiful sunrises as well i mean it's really just a beach lover's paradise and if you want to do something a little different than walking along the beach check out the navarre beach fishing pier that's uh, one of the longest ones here in florida uh, to where you can just walk out onto the pier and just really take in the beautiful views of the coast and the Gulf. Uh, you can catch some dolphins. I recently saw a video on social media where there were some stingrays. Um, you might catch a shark here and there, but they're not typically out there attacking folks. I know people freak out when they see the fins. They can't tell if it's a shark or if it's a dolphin. Could be either or, but there has been sightings of some little sharks in the beaches out here, but um, they're for the most part minding their business. So as long as you don't try and provoke them, you'll be okay. And if you want another option as far as enjoying nice water view, you can check out Navarre Park. This is actually located off of Highway 98. That is just before you get to the bridge that takes you into Navarre Beach. Uh, so this is where they do have picnic areas. They have restrooms there. And this is where they have the playgrounds. There are splash pads for the kiddos to enjoy. Um, there's picnic areas. There's benches out there for you to just be able to sit and relax and get your thoughts together. Uh, or if you just want to take a quick lunch break from work and you're close by, you can head out there just to sit and enjoy your lunch in peace. It's very easily accessible since it is right off of the main road and you don't necessarily have to cross the bridge to get over to the beach. Now, if you're considering to move to the Navarre area for work, it is very important to become familiar with the local job market. Navarre's economy is mainly driven by tourism, hospitality, and service industries. However, many residents do commute to nearby cities like Gulf Breeze or Pensacola or even for Walton Beach for additional job opportunities. Um, so if you are uh, transferring jobs, maybe you are working with an employer and you're able to transfer and stay with that employer. You just need to, of course, make sure that this area uh, does have that option for you to stick with the same employer or maybe you're able to switch and stay in the same line of work. Or if you're just looking for an overall change in your career, again, just do the research first just to make sure you will be able to find what you need to be able to keep up with the bills, <laughs> keep up with the light bill. You want to make sure you have AC during the summer here in Navarre. It still gets a little chilly in the fall and winter, so you want to have heat as well. Um, so as far as what your budget is when you're moving to the area, um, just make sure that the salaries here match what it, your budget is, um, especially if you are going to take a, a cut take a decreased uh, commission or, or salaries or whatever, however you're paid um, to be able to live in this area, just make sure that it's still within a comfortable budget for you to be able to survive. We all know how the economy has been lately. A lot of prices, uh, price increases over the years. Um, so again, just make sure that you are able to secure a stable employment before coming to the area. That if not, um, there's, there's room to explore. Again, there's lots of industries out here, um, a lot of options, especially if you are working in hospitality or um, restaurants or retail or even um, in the medical field, there are some good hospitals nearby. Um, again, if you cannot find exactly what you need in Navarre, but you really, really do want to live in Navarre, just make sure that you are good with the commute to the nearby cities uh, just for the, the um, advanced job opportunities. And last, I wanted to talk about the tips on finding the perfect home for you. Now, working with a trusted local real estate agent is essential in this process here and locating the right place for you. Um, so you want to get with someone that does know the area, knows the market, knows how to work up the paperwork for you, do the offer and get you to closing just so you don't miss out on the opportunity to buy the home of your dreams. 
So if you are looking to move here or just want to get started in the process, make sure you reach out to us here at the Whittemore Group. You can give us a phone call, text, or email so we can assist you from start to finish to make the process a little more easier for you because it can be a headache if you try to get through it alone, uh, but that's what we're here for. Uh, we are dedicated to helping families and investors and really anyone who wants to relocate here to this area. Uh, we like to help uh, anyone meet their goals as far as living in the Sunshine State and being able to purchase their dream home. So if you do have specifics as far as what you're looking for in a home, um, such as the type of home, the, the neighborhood that you are preferring, um, the proximity to things that you need to access on a daily basis, such as the schools, um, grocery stores, your place of employment. If you do want to live on the beach or near the beach, definitely connect with us so we can narrow things down and find you the right one. You might be able to see a lot there on Zillow, uh, Realtor.com and all those other websites, but it's still very important that you connect with a real estate agent that can dive a little deeper into the market and into the housing options for you. Um, I, there are off market properties uh, that are possible options for you as well that Realtors are able to help you with. Um, and we just want to make sure that you are buying a home that is reasonably priced. I know there are a lot of buyers that I've spoken to recently that uh, felt like the homes on the market were priced way too high, but when we actually run the comps, they're not that high <laughs> as they're thinking. It's actually uh, market value. It just seems higher based on um, what they're used to seeing back in their hometown and some areas they think you know it's opposite. The prices are actually dirt cheap compared to where they live. And that's uh, even more appealing for them to wanna to move here, especially with there not being any uh, state tax here in Florida. So that's a, a lot of uh, another good reason why a lot of people like to relocate here is to um, have a little bit more money in their pocket uh, with not having to pay that state tax. So again, if you do need some help uh, finding that perfect spot, connect with us so we can put you in the home that you're looking for in the area that you want and in close proximity to where you wanna be. Now, by all means, you can still do the research online to see um, what schools that you're comfortable with putting your kids in. Uh, you can do the research on certain neighborhoods and you can ask us um, about what you've reviewed and kind of see if that is somewhat near the truth. I know we can't go into great details as realtors as far as um, certain you know, statistics um, and crime rates and things like that, but we can definitely guide you and give you the resources that you would need to be able to find that information. But we do wanna make sure that you are in an area that you're comfortable with, uh, that your kids are comfortable in, you feel safe. And again, the schooling is very important for a lot of um, parents out there. Uh, so we can definitely guide you with that as well. Well, I hope that information was useful to you and you will take those seven things into consideration when you're getting ready to move here to Navarre. Uh, please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and tap that bell so you're notified every time we do a new video about the Emerald Coast. And don't forget to like and share this video with anyone you know that is interested in moving to the Navarre area. I'm Stephanie Bueno with the Whittemore Group at LPT Realty. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Moving to Niceville. That's what you searched, right? Well, if it is, you're in the right place because we're going to talk about the five things that you will love about living here. What we're going to be talking about is the livability of the community, affordability of living in the area. We're going to talk about housing costs.